Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Trader Merlin Show. It is your Monday edition. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend out there. Did something fun with yourselves. I actually had some good times with some nice friends. Safe quarantine distance, I will say, but all in all, it was a good weekend. So hopefully you had a great weekend as well. Uh, and we're greeted by some wonderful market moves today with regards to the equity indexes. You guys saw pretty much just straight bullish action all day long, except for maybe the Russell. There's a little dip in the afternoon, but all in all, S&P down, NASDAQ looking great. Crude oil not looking so well. Of course, you guys know I mentioned I was carrying two contracts over the weekend. I actually added two. Another one, uh, so I've got three long right now. Again, I'm, I told you guys I'm in it for the long haul. I think crude oil is going to do rather well. I just can't imagine OPEC not stepping in at some point and saying, hey, we're cutting production. But uh, that's just a gamble trade on, not a gamble, but a, a longer term trade on my part. Let me tell you what's going to happen today and a couple updates for the Trader Merlin program. Today, obviously, we'll start off with our overall market review, going through our market update and talking about those different seven market segments. Um, also, I'm going to be going into a bullish bearish market discussion. I received a bunch of questions over the weekend and actually last week as well saying, well, where do we stand, right? We had a big sell-off. Now we have a huge rally. They're saying it's the shortest bull or bear market ever. What do you think? So I will give my thoughts on it. And of course, as always, I love when you guys participate and give your feedback to these specific questions and topics. And again, uh, we've got a, a nice group out there today. So a shout out to all our regulars. So hello, Jorge, Naum, Gaer, Big Eb, Damien. Good to have you with us, my friend. Gino, Dave, Siraj, uh, and Trent, and Nick as well. And of course, Brendan. I hope I didn't offend Ruben the other day because I think maybe I did and maybe he took off. I hope Ruben comes back. Um, yes, I do have a lot of crazy shirts, right? You're like, is that guy gay? No, I just have a really good shirt collection, you know? I, I always like crazy patterns. All right, uh, and then after that, I'm going to go to some listener questions. Um, I have had one from Steven and uh, Trade Trending. We're both on Twitter. They send in questions there. So, of course, you guys know there's multiple ways for you to con contact us and interact with us on the program. That's going to be by going to TraderMerlin.com is the easiest way. Of course, if you're watching this live on YouTube, which is where most of you are watching right now, you can certainly send in your questions there, interact, and I will do my best to monitor those and uh, pay attention to all those as they come through on today's show. So without further ado, let's get started with your market update. Yes, a lot has happened out there over the weekend. Some nice market moves to be sure. We'll start things off with the worst performer. And when I say worst performer, it's so challenging with a bond instrument because what's the worst performing? Is it the yield or is it the underlying price movement of that bond? Well, today we will take a look at the 10-year. Uh, let's bring that 10-year up. Here is your ZN, which is the 10-year U.S. Treasury Note Futures product. As you can see, we had a bit of a little gap up here today, uh, but really kind of a topping tail and bottoming tail. Not a lot of major change with the way that it moved. However, I do believe you're going to see it challenge that um, half a percentage point rate, which was back to this peak here on the 9th of March. We're moving up today. Today you saw the Treasury yields drop by about 10%, a little over 10%. We are currently at 0.67 on the yield. That's why you see this creeping up here. So as the yield drops, the price of that bond will be moving to the upside. And again, I do think you'll see it hit this 140 mark here relatively soon as this fear has not totally subsided in our overall marketplace. Now, um, with regards to feedback, you guys have sent in great feedback. I heard that when I tap on my desk, it makes a loud popping noise. So right now we've modified the studio a little bit. Microphone's now sitting on a piece of foam. I will be checking the audio after and sound to hopefully dial these things and make them better. We've been playing with lighting and all sorts of things, so hopefully it gets better and better. Again, I love your feedback, both positive and negative. So if you have negative stuff, let me know and I will try to make those adjustments and make the show better. I notice every day somebody hits the thumbs down button and doesn't like the show. That's cool. Just tell me why, will you? All right, let's look at our next worst performer. Crude oil also showing an ugly day out there, down 5.86%. As you guys know, I've been saying multiple times, anything below 20, I'm going to be a net buyer. Where did it go today? We dropped all the way down to 1927 on crude oil. It closed the day at 2025, which put it down about 5.8%. Still, $1.26 drop in the price of crude oil. It's getting you some very tasty levels down here. I saw um, some in the OTA community saying 17 was their target. Would not surprise me. I just think from an economics perspective and the dependence on economies of countries on the price of crude oil being high, I can't see this lasting too long. But, you know, we are in that period of time where almost nobody is driving, nobody's flying, and demand is falling through the floor, so if supply stays the same, we will continue to see this chart drop further and further and further. 
Yes, um, you guys, uh, yes, TJ always says that, and you're right, TJ tells me, remind the audience to hit the thumbs up button, or like the show, or subscribe, I never do that stuff, which is probably why I suck at social media stuff, I'm gonna get better, guys, but you guys hit that like button, thumbs up if you enjoyed the show today. Alright, so that was Crude Oil, that was your number six, number five, we're gonna go to the GC, gold down about 12 bucks today, I... I'm still in the camp of it going to rip through that 1700 mark here soon. I just feel like we are not out of the woods yet with this coronavirus thing. You're looking at 1641 as we speak on the price of gold. That's a slide of 0.77%, so less than 1% or $12.80. All right, now it's index time. Moving on to number five. Of course, I don't have my paper in front of me with them all numbered, but here is the Russell 2000, which had a pretty decent showing today, up 2.33% to 1158. That was a 26 point uh, move to the upside. Although technically, we look at this chart here, I don't see anything that really screams at me that there's anything major happening here. So I'm not a huge fan of it technically. Uh, all in all, we had a nice rally. I think that 1200 mark could be a potential uh, shorting point for the Russell for anybody once we get there. I'll let you know because if it gets to 1200, I'll be shorting it myself. All right, next on the list is going to be the S&P 500. Here is the ES, which on the day had a 93-point move. Pretty nice, uh, much better than what we saw with the Russell 2000. Reason being, take a peek at the move today. We came right back up into these highs right around 26, oh, the highs from um, Friday session, 26.35. Today we hit a high on the S&P of 26.21. I have a stop loss presently in right now at 20.25, so fingers crossed we don't hit that because I am currently short. Uh, how many men? I'm in two S&P ES mini or contracts short, so um, I'm betting this bad boy is going to pause here a little bit and slip to the downside. Hopefully I won't get taken out, but just letting you guys know my positions because you guys keep asking me, so there we go. All right, uh, next on the list is going to be your, I'm going to say, what are we at now? Um, I'm going to say number two. Yep, I think it is number two. That's the NASDAQ taking the silver medal. 78.65 is what you have the uh, NASDAQ 100 closing at. That was a gain of 3.62% for the composite overall. Very nice gains out there for these market indexes today in the face of uh, a lot of uncertainty. I still think we are going to uh, have some challenges ahead. Notice where we are right now. I'm going to move this little purple line up here on the click platform. You guys can see that coming right into that 8,000 mark, we've definitely had some challenges there. So I would, I would not be surprised to see this being a stall point for these indexes. Um, but we'll talk about that bull market, bear market here after I get my opening segment done. So that was your NASDAQ, but that wasn't the best performer. Best performer coming in the shape of Bitcoin. That's right, digital currencies. You know, we looked at our program we did a couple weeks ago talking about the digital dollar. Bitcoin is not the digital dollar. Bitcoin would be an alternative to that that the government can't stop. The digital dollar is something the government can do anything they want with, including confiscate, destroy, make it disappear, or just cut you off from your money altogether. That's scary. Bitcoin, on the other hand, showing a nice gain today, 8.8% right now, 6,480 is where we finished the day for Bitcoin. The last 24 hours was a nice move. I'll even show you the last week here. So you can see there's been a ton of volatility in this bad boy, but all in all, um, a nice move out there in the last 24 hours for the price of Bitcoin. All right, uh, that will... Um let me get, let me, I'm, I mess with my screen a lot. So basically what I did, guys, is I'm, I'm trying to do a whole bunch of different stuff with templates and layouts to make the screen look awesome. Uh, you'll notice there's been some new changes as well with these graphics packages and layouts. So uh, thank you, Nick, who, fingers crossed, will be on an airplane soon. Nick is actually at the airport trying to get back to Italy today. So safe travels, my friend, and thank you for all the help that you've given me uh, over the last couple of weeks on this, on this platform and endeavor. All right, um, let's go to the topic du jour, which is... Bull market or bear market? You know, and one of the things we've had to address repeatedly over the past couple of weeks uh, have been the, that question, that conundrum of, are we in a bull market or are we in a bear market? Now, of course, technically, since we sold off so aggressively, without a doubt, we were in a bear market. By definition, you guys all know this one, we did a whole show on it, a bear market's gonna be where you have over a 20% decline. Interestingly enough, there isn't really the same numerical metric where they say, oh, if a market's 20% off of its lows, it's now in a bull market. There isn't that same correlation. So it's a little bit challenging to say we are in fact in a bull market. Now I will say this, I believe that if you look at five days worth of trading and you're saying, are we in a bull market because of five days worth of trading, you don't know what you're talking about. Five days worth of trading does not make a bull market. 
If anything, what you're going to see here in a second is more an example of a bull trap. And a bull trap is something that gets these people who are feeling, I got to buy the dip into the market. And then all of a sudden it fleeces them again with another aggressive move down, which is personally where I think we are headed. So let me walk you through some different examples of how this has happened in the past. Because if I've learned anything from the uh, financial markets over the last 20 how many years has it been? Since 96. So 24 years. God, I'm old. 24 years doing this. It's that markets repeat themselves over and over and over and over again. It's just you have to be able to look for when these situations occur again and capitalize on them. Right now, I think we are in exactly the same situation that we saw back in 2000 as well as 2008. And I, for one, am looking for the right opportunity to short, which is why I'm presently short right now. So um, that wasn't a dead cat bounce. Brendan says that was a dead elephant bounce. Could be. Bro. Um, so let me show you uh, full screen so you guys don't have to stare at my horrible mustache. I don't know when I'm going to end up shaving this one, guys. It's just it's just there. It's not Movember, but until I get uh, back into the the OTA studio, I'll probably just keep uh, keep on growing out and see if I can grow some scruffy beard. All right. So here's where we are right now. And this um, Pepper Bradford says, who decided that 20% equals a bear market? That's a great question. I don't know who actually did that, uh, who came up with those numbers. It's just been kind of a, a benchmark that the industry has used for as long as I've been involved with the financial markets. So it's, you know, we all like to have numerical points where we say it is now this because of this. And somebody, I think, just um, threw that number out there. So I don't know exactly where that came from, but it's a great question. Um, Austin says, love traps, always my best trades. Yeah, they are. They can be very, very lucrative. So I want you guys to look real quick of what we have happening now, okay? So this is gonna be kind of macro analysis. If we look at this current sell-off, right? And I'm just using the S&P SP futures here. We have had, and I will add on a different one here. We're gonna add on labels and show you the, um, do you guys want the amount of candles of trading days or actual days? I think I'll just do the actual number of days, including weekends that it took to fall this far. So. In 32 days, this is remarkable. We've had a 35.8% decline in the S&P 500 in 32 days. That's that's over a percent a day. Hallelujah. These are the glory days of trading where you'll remember back and tell your kids, Hey, Timmy, I remember when the market sold off 36% in 32 days. Like a bad episode of Homer Simpson. This is remarkable. And that's including some big up days, right? Well, that officially put us into a bear market. And now people are screaming and raving saying, it's over, hallelujah, you know, the ding dong, the witch is dead, the wicked witch, because we're up 21.18% in our markets presently. And that was over a period of, a, a very short period of time. Let me uh, throw in the number of days as well, time span, and set that as a default for you. So in four days, we've rallied 21%. Again, this is nuts. I mean, this to me is is crazy to have these types of moves. Now, I have given back, to be fair, I have given back some profits in this 21% rally over four days. But rest assured, I will make it back on the next leg down because the market right now is poised for negative sentiment and negative moves. So the question is, where do we go from here? What does this mean? Because we could make the argument, if you're using a 20% metric, that yes, we had 20% sell-off, we're now in a bear market, and all of a sudden we've had a 20% rally, okay, maybe that puts you back in a bull market. Again, I would never, ever say that a four-day rally is an indication of a bear market. That, to me, would be called a dead cat bounce or a bear or a bull trap. And basically, right now, the majority of the world is looking for a buy point. Ask your family, ask your friends, what do they think about the markets? And I'll bet you a lot of people are saying what? Hey, is this a good time to buy? Markets are down huge. Should I buy right now? Should I buy? Majority of the unknown investors are asking that right now. Am I right, guys? I mean, how many of you have had family and friends ask you that? I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be a lot. Thanks, medics. Scruff McGruff, huh? Yeah, I am a little bit scruffy out there today, but why not? I, I don't have to worry about anybody because I'm under no corporate thumb right now. I love it. So let me know. What do you guys think? Um, type that one in there. Let me see. There was a uh, comment. Did you say OTA? Man, that sounds like hope for OTA. We'll be back. Uh, Jorge, I 100% believe OTA will be back. This is this is one of the most unbelievable things I've ever experienced in my life. I feel like we're on an episode of of um, American Greed on CNBC, and when you look behind the scenes, it's such garbage. The lawsuit by the FTC, personally, I think is is there are some things that um, need to be fixed. That's for sure. 
But what OTA does for the community, for the trading environment, for, for financial markets from a literacy perspective and helping people understand what really goes on, nobody out there does it like they do. And honestly, I am 100% behind them. I can't wait for this to be over and get back to business as usual because I am a huge fan of OTA. If it wasn't for Online Trading Academy, I don't think I would be in the financial markets in the capacity that I am. So I am very excited about some resolution to all this and finally getting a day in court. Um, all right, so we got everybody. So dip, 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 dip. Yeah, uh, trying to rub it in the face because I'm still bearish. <laughs> yeah, right? Because the vast majority of people are net, you know, talking about holding forever. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a buy and hold investor. That's what they're taught. So I think it's great that we have these types of events because, oops, we don't want to do that. I want to do that. Um, I think it's great to have these types of events because it washes out these unknown investors and hopefully for us, our community, our group, etc., will be more prepared for it. Yes, Brendan. Well, let me let me be fair. I would say the FTC can be jerks. There are some legitimate businesses that the FTC has gone after that didn't deserve what happened. There's also some seriously shady, horrible businesses out there. And unfortunately, in their attempt to go after every trading firm out there, OTA just got swept up in it. And I actually take my hat off to you all because he's saying, no, we do provide a great service. We are doing a great thing for the for the community and for people who want to learn about markets and he's fighting it most people caved and just disappeared so uh props to that anyway no more no more ita stuff uh, let's go look historically i i think that the mass vast majority of you as you've uh, illustrated here in the chat is that your family and friends are all saying you know should i buy should i buy let's look and hopefully I have this set for the same time frame and i apologize it's going to look kind of wonky for a little bit as i go way back i'm going to go back to 2008 just to show you what this might look like. Okay, 2008. And if you guys, if it makes you guys feel any better, I'll just ask TJ. TJ, could you go back to 2008? Even though he's not here. He's watching. Hi, TJ. All right, take a peek at some of these bounces. Um, you guys can see on your screen right now, this is uh, 2017 into 2018. And you can see there's there were some huge bounces. Here's a 13.59% bounce, which brought a bunch of people into the market. I'm going to actually go to the hard red edge here so you guys, uh, I'll play it like we didn't see it. Perfect, right there. Look at that hard red edge of the screen. That's a point where all of a sudden people are going, oh, this market's bottomed out. And who cares if it's in demand zone or not on the left-hand side, right? I'm just saying when you have a market that's showing conviction to the downside and whatever happened, it doesn't matter what time this is. You can tell, you can all see in the chart that there was aggressive moves to the downside. The down candles were generally bigger than the up candles, lower highs, lower lows, and really aggressive selling. That shows you fear in the marketplace. So when people bought this bounce of 13%, almost 14%, they thought it was the bottom. It was a bear trap because boom, we came ripping back down. Here's another move up of 17.7%. Now, this one lasted a while, and granted, there is opportunity in these bounces, but it still continued to show much more aggressive downside movement because that's what the market was into at that moment in time. You can also see back here in uh, October of 2008, you had a 30% rally, and people go, oh, this is the bottom. Boom. All of a sudden, it gives it all back and much more. So there's a mantra that I've used so many times in the show, you guys are probably sick of hearing me say it, which is the trend is your friend until the bend at the end. Right now, we have an aggressive trend to the south side. How about this one? Here's, uh, let's go 2000. Perfect. Here's your uh, 2000 to 2001, and you can see here's another huge move to the upside. Granted, it was two months worth, right? Well, almost three months worth. This was a 22% rally, but the bigger picture, if we step back to a monthly, would have clued you into even more downside movement, and that's what happened. So, and there's one more I think I, I outlined here, which was back in 2002, you know, we had this aggressive market sell-off. Look where my cursor is. As I'm moving this thing around right here, lower highs, lower lows, aggressive sell-off, speed move to the south side, 30% rally. People think that's a buy point, and it gives it all back. So until things change, they're gonna stay the same. So right now, if we say bull market or bear market, I am of the opinion of many of you, which uh, probably is why you watch the show, is this is a bear trap or bull trap. This is getting people to buy back into the hope that we have a cure for coronavirus. The, the thought that this is all going to pass in very short order and all of a sudden everything is going to be great going forward. I showed you a chart last week which should have made everybody's butt pucker a little bit and that was unemployment numbers. I mean, you're looking at what they thought 1.6 million and we came out at 3.2. 
Uh, this week, let me real quickly just uh, give you some dates and numbers here because I want to make sure we, we get this stuff out exactly right. I haven't been doing the week ahead, so uh, I don't have all the my numbers like I normally have for you guys to show. But if we look at what's coming out this week from an economic data perspective, you guys should all be very careful because there are a couple of data points that uh, I want to share with you. Um, the pending home sales came out today, as did K Shiller Composite 20 home price. Uh, that's tomorrow, so no, no big deal there. The number that you want to be uh, interested in is Wednesday. Wednesday could be an absolute shit show. Why? Because they're expecting um, employment, non farm employment change, ADP non farm employment change. Our previous month was 183,000 new jobs created. That's the previous month. They're expecting it to drop by 150. I think it's going to be way more than that. I think you're going to see negative 200 plus on the number of jobs. Job evaporation, not destruction, evaporation right now. If that number comes out on the same day, actually uh, unemployment claims come out the next day on Thursday. So Wednesday and Thursday, guys, could see some huge market moves. And I think that might rally us right up into some supply. Look for shorting opportunities because if I have to choose between a bull market or a bear market, I am clearly in the bear market category because of what we look at right here, which is that trend is your friend until the bend at the end. Granted, our trend is only a month and a half long or a little over a month long, but it broke that trend, right? I think you're all are in that same camp. Um, let's see. I'm trying to read through some of these questions here as we get going. I know I, I'm not doing a good enough job and I apologize. Um, Jorge, I'll look at airlines at the end here. Yeah, I think that that might actually be a, a good alternative. I think airlines could potentially be a good buy. Even with the negative news, people just aren't panicking enough yet, in my opinion, to buy. <laughs> I think you're right. And I um, again, I don't think that the... I don't think that the market has had a chance to digest the economic data. Right now, our problem is it's all speculative. It's saying, okay, we know there's 3.2 million people who follow for unemployment claims, but that's not what drives our economy. It seems like the stock market is driving the economy, right? If, if we have that many people, and it went from, I think it was supposed to be 260,000, the expectation was 1.6 million unemployment claims, and then we're at 3.2. Those numbers have not even come close to showing up in anybody's earnings statement. So right now we're speculating and I think we're being very aggressive because we're in a bull market of underestimating the impact of this, which you guys know, this is just my opinion. And again, you may completely disagree with me. That is okay. Um, you're all welcome to disagree with me, but I think that earnings season is gonna be the telltale. And remember that earnings season is not going to reflect all of this because earnings season is really going from December to April, uh, December, January, February, March. So it'll be those three months. Well. January was a normal business. Everything was normal in January, right? Airline stocks didn't really start cratering until February. So think of this. If you have the quarterly earnings statement representing three months, which let's say started, I'll just say January 1st. You got January, February, March. One and a half months of those, actually one and a quarter has been impacted by the coronavirus. So those earnings statements that we're going to see aren't even full blown punch in the face from the coronavirus. It could be Q2, which will have a three-month window if we're still under quarantine, that all of a sudden, that is the real doo-doo hitting the fan. And honestly, it'll knock the whole fan over, and then things really go south. So uh, that's just my, my perspective of it. <laughs> um, Brendan says, I really don't want to see it pop up more. I don't either, uh, because obviously because I'm short, and I don't want to be taken out of these things. But if it does move up some more, it moves up some more, and I'll, I'll have to deal with it as it goes. So... Um, I wanted to do a poll. Unfortunately, I didn't have the poll here for you guys to, to participate in, but I, I have a feeling most of you are probably in that same camp, right? Um, I'll, I'll just say this. How many of you think, uh, yes or no, that we are in a beginning of a bull market right now? Just just from a show of conversation, just curious to see how many of you think we're in a bullish market right now. Like we've turned the corner. Our markets are looking better, right? We're seeing some stability. We were oversold. Um I, I could even go out there and show you some specific tools which people have asked about, things like uh, RSI, okay? So let me show you the market with RSI because people have been asking me about indicators and I'm not a huge fan of indicators, but because, um, I mean, I know them well. Um, you would have had multiple times where it told you to buy this and this is why I hate indicators. Let, let's just play devil's advocate right here and for those that were using something like RSI, uh, I got to go forward one more click just so you guys can see this bad boy. Yeah, so almost everybody here is saying no, and I agree with you guys all. Um, Auto says maybe he's in a bull market. Okay. 
Um, Alex has bought them at about fourteen fifty. Yeah, I think um, <laughs> I think fourteen fifty might be. Personally, for me, it's a little low, but hey, we could definitely get there. Um, and I, I think all of you are traders, so you understand um, th what a kind of bear or bull trap is. Right now, I think this is a short squeeze and a bull trap at once. And I'll do this for you, Austin, just because uh, I have to do it. And I'm a big Beavis and Butthead fan. <laughs> no. There you go. Done. Of course, the Beavis and Butthead were uh, way ahead of their time. Always talking about TP for the bunghole, right? Now we're having a TP shortage. So Beavis and Butthead would have had a tough time. Um, uh, let's see. You would have two false buy signals on RSI as an entry. Yes, exactly what I was trying to point out here. If you guys look right where my cursor is at right now, RSI gave you a buy signal. Now, it would have been generated at the close of this candle, not at the beginning of it, at the close of this candle. There's another reason people always get um, indicator stuff wrong. So right where that yellow horizontal line is where RSI would have told you to buy. Really? So you had a couple days, wah, wah. Yeah, maybe you, you, you would have lost money the next day, uh, made it the next, and then you'd be deep underwater right now. So I am not a fan of using these indicators. Uh, right now, your last buy signal would have been right here at the close of this candle. So there's somebody out there who's gonna be bragging that RSI has got them in a nice winning trade and it it may have. I think that you guys need to understand when we look at things like this, situations where you're gonna use an indicator, let's just take a step back and look at this picture at, at, from a, from an instructor and trader perspective. We've got an aggressive market sell-off, lower highs, lower lows. You're not looking to pick the bottom here with RSI. With RSI, what you're waiting for would be what? You want this to rally up above that 70 mark to become an overbought situation. Overbought during a downtrend, that's a great time to short, especially if you guys can line those up with a supply level. Hopefully, uh... <laughs> don't worry, Lewis. I'm not going to step on Brandon Wendell's feet. Brandon's awesome. Actually, Brandon will be on the program on Thursday, guys. I actually got my system set up so I can now have guests. Hopefully, that will work well. Um, I'm still not using my new computer because this thing has not had any, <clears throat> knock on wood, any problems with regards to lags or data issues. So I don't want to mess with it. Although I'd like to show you guys better resolution and maybe do some more fun features and things. Anyway, um, that, that's where we stand right now. RSI, again, to me, a such a lagging indicator. People are using it wrong. I hear people talking about using it for a buy signal right now. If anything, it should be used as a shorting indicator. If, if this market rallies up to, let's say, 2,800, you will get an overbought situation on RSI. It's right into a supply level. Now you're looking at going short on the market. So use them the right way. Another one somebody was asking about, MACD. MACD, not McDonald's, but the MACD indicator. Let's turn off RSI. Look, MACD, at least it kept you short a majority of this move, right? So you would have gotten short this candle here. Oh, beautiful. Uh, you would have gotten short at 32.15. And let me see if I can uh, set this as a default here real quick, just so I can get some nice lines. And it would have told you to have gotten out. Let me make sure I get the right point. No, no, right here. All right, so you would have rode this all the way down and then gotten out at 16, uh, 2611. Now, granted, that's a 400-point move in the market. Oh, actually, let me get that. 600-point move. That's amazing. But look how much extra you left on the table. Lagging indicators, folks. Um, you know, I'm not saying you would have gotten out at 2100, but there could have been somewhere at the 2250, 2300 where you would have gotten out and made yourself even more. So lagging indicators. All right. Um, he only uses only SR and congestion. Yeah, exactly, Steve. And that's that's the point you have to understand with all these guys is we're okay to use indicators. I'm okay to use indicators. Just make sure that they are a secondary or even a third level uh, indicator that you're using to make your trading and investing decisions. So, oh, is it the 30th today? I even got my dates right. I'm trying to do lower thirds. I'm trying to look professional. The TJ did such a good job at, at making me look professional in our big studio. So uh, hopefully it looks better. See, I got my name on there and everything. All right. Um, so that's my bullish and bearish show for today. I will probably uh, move away from that right now and go to a couple listener questions just while I can. Um, let me just real quickly go to some questions here. Uh, Matt Taylor says, RSI is good for momentum and divergences and confluence, not a standalone indicator. 100% agree with you, Matt. Um, I have been saying this since, well, I, was, I can't say since I started trading. Um, it really goes back to, I would say, probably 2001. I used to be, uh, from 98 to 2001, I loved indicators. And at a certain point, I had so many indicators on my screen, 
at certain points I lost track of what Price was doing. I love when my computer does that at random times. That's saying that's supposed to be the end of the show. Um, so for me, it was a revelation when my mentors were like, stop using these things. It's like just using your instrument panel on your dashboard. You can get earlier signs from the sound of your engine and knowing how it's running. And to me, that's looking at the price chart. So 100% agree. I think um, you are, you're right that from a momentum and shorter term stuff, they can be great. But longer term, you're leaving so much money on the table from the lagginess of these indicators. Um, but they can be great as long as they line up with supply and demand zones. That makes them even better. So awesome. Thank you, guys. You like this shirt, Herbert? Come on. What's wrong with this shirt? Uh, <laughs> Otto, thanks. I'm doing well for my apprentice. Yeah, I'm like Darth Vader and the Emperor at the same time. Oh, my apprentice. I got it all going on here. What else we got? Um, I don't mind the odd indicator or two since I find a couple useful. Well, yeah, moving averages I think are great. So if you're in a trade, and again, this goes back to your levels of decision-making process. So for me, as someone who's an online trading academy graduate, it's all about supply and demand. I start there. I'll make a trade, both my entry, stop loss, and price targets all being made off of that supply or demand zone. Once that's done and I'm in a trade and things are moving in my favor, I might use a moving average to help support and keep me in that trade longer than I may have. So let's say I've got a target set at, I don't know, 10 points higher. And it's moving, it gets right to my target, and I look at the moving average, it's now curved up, it's sloping to the upside. I may actually hold on to that position and now switch and use the moving average as a stop loss or kind of a trailing stop loss just because it tells you momentum. It tells you the surge, which way that water is flowing, Bruce Lee. And I think that that can be very beneficial. So yes, I am a fan of... Um, of moving averages. All right, let's see. Hori says, keep the mustache. I, I'll, I'll try to shave the rest of it. I really am bad with facial hair, I'll tell you. Um, all right, Trent. Um, you mentioned this yesterday, and, and I, I'm not, this is just my two cents. I'm worried about those two companies you mentioned. Let's let's go there and show you the, um, I'll go full left here. I'm really worried about the cruise ships. I just have a feeling Americans are going to be very skittish. Now, we need airplanes. That's a necessity to move about the country. No offense to stealing Southwest Airlines tagline there. But if you look at CCL, and I, I think I know why you're saying this, Trent. Um, I, I, I love it because where on earth are you going to find something that's down as much as these in such a short period of time? Let's real quickly, and again, this show is supposed to be 30 minutes, and now we're going way longer. 84%? Um, and this isn't like a crappy company, right? This isn't some fly-by-night scam company. This is Carnival, down 84%. So I think, Trent, what you're doing right now is you're saying, hey, you know what? This is a hell of a deal. This looks like an amazing buy. And I agree with you, but boy, I think cruise ships are going to have a tough time getting their feet back on the ground. I mean, right now you have these people who are hearing these horror stories about being stuck in a boat with 8,000 people, all that got coronavirus. Like, oh my God, I'm never getting on a cruise ship again. So to me, that's a little bit dangerous out there. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, Austin, that's a good question. I feel like you're throwing darts at these travel companies. Who survives? Who who wins? Brian's right. It's all going to be about the B word, bailouts. Um, I think there were a couple questions about airlines. Who had questions about airlines? Go ahead and send those on in again because I'm going to just finish up with airlines here. And uh, maybe tomorrow I'll start with um, Stephen and, and Trade Trending's Twitter questions. Sorry, guys. I'm just out of time. Uh, here's United Airlines. You guys know my take on this one. If you wanted to buy airlines, I think you have to take a step back and look at the long term. Right? You have to take a step back and say, am I going to buy them for the quick bounce and make profit like United Airlines went from 17 to 38? I mean, why? how did that happen in four days? Crazy. That's probably not going to happen again. What will probably happen is it will probably keep drifting down because we are going to extend these quarantines, not just in the U.S., but internationally. So to me, I'm afraid to buy UAL right now. It seems so tempting. Um, I am actually, I told you guys, I'm committed to buy at 25. So I could be ending up with uh, 2,000 shares of United Airlines at 25, but I feel long term it will be fine and they'll also get bailed out. I think you're going to see a bailout of airlines because they have to spur the economy and travel is going to be one of those things. So the government can't afford to let major airlines collapse. Will we see some of the secondary ones disappear? Maybe. I think United, Delta, and American are probably gonna get the bailout packages here. Now, some of these do have some very attractive buy points. So the question now becomes, Trent and others, do you, do you wanna buy them right now and take the risk of that? Or do you wanna sell puts and commit yourself to buy even lower 
And if it doesn't get there, you're just collecting premium. That's the, the conundrum that I find myself in. Right now, I'm more of the opinion of let's sell puts because the volatility is off the charts in these things. You're getting great premiums. Sell puts, therefore you could buy this much, much lower. And if it doesn't get down to that strike price and you never end up actually buying it, you're collecting a handsome premium. Um, the rate of return I got on my United Airlines puts, which was for 30 days out, was 19%. So if it doesn't get below 25, I'll make 19% rate of return in uh, one month on those United Airlines puts. Now, could it drop below and, and put me at 25? Yeah, it could. But remember, I already collected almost $4 premium per. So if I was exercised at 25, let's say it dropped all the way down to 22 and by April 17th and I got executed. Well, if it dropped down to uh, 22, as I think I just said, that's 25, subtract my four, my buy-in price is 21, I'm still going to make money on that. So anyway, that's one way I would go about it. Can they go to pennies or zero? Uh, absolutely, Olivia, that is, that, and that's a genuine risk. You could see them go bankrupt. I think, and I don't mean to scare you, Trent, I think that if anyone's gonna go bankrupt, it could be some of these cruise ships, right? To me, that's a scary one because they're so limited. It's not an essential thing to our economy to have cruise ships. It's critical to have airlines, right? We have to have airlines to move around the country. But cruise ships, I see the government could probably let them fail. So they could go down to pennies. Remember, a lot of these companies, especially the airlines, have been doing share buybacks. All of that money from the tax advantages and all that repatriation of capital and all the corporate tax savings was designed so that these companies would build their infrastructure, buy more planes, hire more employees, and get bigger and bigger and bigger. While some of that did happen, a lot of it went right back into buying shares, which drove up their share prices. To me, as you guys know, that's artificial manipulation of the share price. It is propping it up. So it's no shock to see it come crashing down like this. It's just a question of when will it stop? And I think airlines are probably the, the safer way to go. Um, let's see, I agree people will not be traveling for some time. I, I, I will probably, honestly, Olivia, I will be traveling on an airplane rather soon. Um, I, I think you're gonna get some screaming deals here in, in July, August, September, October. So plan some nice trips at the end of the year. You can probably get first class for pennies. Um, I think it could be a, a good opportunity. Um, there is a market for used airplanes. Hmm, <laughs> where's the market for used cruise ships? It's uh, a great question, Mark. You know who's got the market for used cruise ships? Billionaires. <laughs> You're going to see, you know, like Jay-Z go buy a, a Royal Caribbean cruise ship and turn it into a party boat. I might go on that party boat. It sounds like fun. Um, Natalia says, why United over American? No particular, no particular reason. Uh, I have not gone into the fundamentals of American or Delta or United. I just think that those are our big three. America, Delta, United are, we'll call that the Americana trio of airlines. You, you could put in Southwest, but Southwest doesn't get us really outside of the U.S. borders. They're really more of a domestic airline. Granted, they're an amazing company. Um, I'm looking for ones that have the global reach as we start to go back to normal. Whew, wow. Um, I went to a lot of long-winded stuff out there. So, um, Thank you guys. I will go back through here and see if I can find some questions in the chats. I apologize to Trader Trade Trending and Stephen uh, Nickel who wanted gold and silver analyzed. I'll have to do that on tomorrow's show. I just went a little long-winded here on some of these. Uh, again, you guys have been great. Thank you for the participation today. I would encourage you to, uh, as well, if you have members or friends of yours who have not don't know about the transition of the show, I still get emails every day asking me, well, what's happening to Power Trading Radio? I don't know what will happen with Power Trading Radio if it will come back, but I love doing this and I didn't want this to stop. I love doing the broadcast side of it. So um, if you have friends, family, or whoever who may have watched Power Trading Radio, part of your community, let them know for right now, it's switching to here at Trader Merlin. I will be doing this hopefully forever and keep on going doing this. Um, I'm, I'm obviously a fan of what I do and I love doing this, especially with the community support from you guys. So uh, spread the word, you know, click that like button, uh, subscribe to the channels here. Also on the podcast, iTunes podcast is probably the best thing because that will get me more viewers that have never been on this show before and bring it back to more of a community. All right, that will do it for today's show, everybody. Thank you guys so much again. If you have questions, comments, feedback, want to give me words of wisdom, tell me my microphone sucked or was amazing, whatever, your feedback helps me make this show better. I appreciate it. Whether it's positive or negative, just be courteous about it, even if it's negative. Uh, go to TraderMerlin.com. You can send me in questions there anytime that you would like. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, and I will hopefully answer all those questions on the show. If not, you can leave your comments and questions down below the video today, and I will do my best to answer those on upcoming shows. Until then, happy trading, everybody. Thank you so much for today's participation. We'll see you tomorrow.